Long live Ireland, ladies and gentlemen. There's been trouble in Ireland, and we're going to talk about that tonight on the report from Tiger Mountain. Stick around and listen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's been uh, trouble in Ireland, um, and uh, we're going to talk about that tonight on the show. So um, there was an attack um, on some school children, you know, in in, um, in Ireland, in Dublin. Um, you know, I have a friend over there as a filmmaker, and uh, you know, one of his kids went to this school. So you know, this this is something that affects friends of mine. You know, there was an Algerian immigrant uh, who attacked some school children. Obviously, France has had trouble with um, Algerian Muslim immigrants attacking people, and obviously, this has now come to Ireland. And and uh, then there was a kind of almost spontaneous pogrom, you could say, uh, against um, immigration. Um, Conor McGregor was an MMA fighter who, uh, you know, is a famous athlete in uh, in Ireland. He's come out and said Ireland is at war, ladies and gentlemen, which I think to a large extent it is. I think a lot of our countries, due to uh, mass immigration, particularly from uh, people who are hostile to Western culture like uh, Muslim countries, we are at war, you know, um, with this problem. And, you know, I think Ireland is a country that, you know, uh, is kind of strange because, you know, if you look at their political class at the moment, it's all very much controlled by global elites. You know, you have uh, Leo Vardica, who's the current Tassioc. Tassioc is their version of the prime minister. Um, and, you know, he is a gay Indian man uh, who, you know, is from the School of Davos, World Economic Forum and all that. I mean, I don't know why they have a gay Indian man leading Ireland, which used to be one of the strongest nationalist countries on earth. I mean, if, you know, recent history um, needs to remind you um, for, well, it's, I mean, for hundreds of years, the Irish have been fighting the English are people who are basically the same as them, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I mean, they're Protestant, the English are Protestant, and the Irish are, more, are Catholic. And there's been this huge fight going on with them, really, for hundreds of years. But, you know, I guess since, you know, 1917, 1918, things kicked off in the modern era. And obviously there was the troubles, you know, of the 60s and 70s. And, you know, there was all the terrorist bombings of the IRA. People think that uh, Muslim terrorists, um, you know, are out of hand. I mean, they should have remembered. I was alive in the 70s and the early 80s during Thatcher's time. And there was just a tremendous amount of bombings going on from the IRA. It seemed to be every week there'd be some kind of bombing. You know what I mean? So there was tremendous unrest. Um, from the Irish Republican Army, who were f fighting to keep the English out of Ireland. Um, and, you know, it's just incredible that when that conflict ended in the late 90s, because that was a conflict that did end, the IRA decided to disarm itself. Uh, it had a political wing, Sinn Féin, which was actually a radical left. So they were left-wing nationalists, which is an unusual combination. Um, they sort of went globalist, uh, the, uh, Sinn Féin, and, um, you know, begin to buy into all this kind of Marxist crap that, you know, the World Economic Forum, so, you know, and, and so, you know, then they began to flood um, Ireland with immigrants. Um, and obviously, when that first begins, it might only be one or two percent of the population. People don't really notice. They think, oh, there's just a few more people. But slowly but surely, the, you know, uh, it, it's getting so that I think in something like 50 years, Irish people will be a minority in their own country. I mean, just let that sink in. I don't know if you've been to Ireland. Um, I have. It's definitely one of my favourite countries on earth. Um, probably with Australia. It's almost the, the most like Australia. The people have a very... Um, and I'm talking about Australians, real, you know, uh, Anglo-Saxon Australians. Um, the, the Irish people are very much like us. And obviously many of us are, are, have Irish background. Um, and so, you know, it is a country very much like Australia and its people. The people there are incredibly authentic. They've produced some of the greatest poets, writers, playwrights, novelists uh, of the last hundred years. From W. B. Yeats to you know, um, you know, just you know, W. H. Alden to Oscar Wilde to um, you know James Joyce, you know, the list just goes on of major world uh, Irish um, geniuses. Um, it's an incredible country. The people there are unique. They they do have this strange dislike for England and the English, but I don't know how they could fight for four hundred years to keep the English, who are people basically the same as them, out of their country, and then you know. When the troubles wind down in the late nineties, they just for the last twenty five years have thrown their doors open to people from cultures that clearly hate the Irish culture and are going to do everything they can to destroy it. So it's a very strange situation what's going on. Obviously, these mass demonstrations have raised the issue, according to Leo Vardica, the Tassioc, of right wing terrorism or whatever. And obviously, that's been the main you know, um, point of uh, a talking point that's come out of it. How can Leo Vardica crack down on hate speech and all this kind of stuff? Um, you know, which is basically, uh, it was a kind of populist uprising where the Irish people just weren't going to take it. And, you know, I know that Sinn Fein has been corrupted by the Marxists and the School of Davos. 
But, you know, um, these are people that are going to fight for their own country, ladies and gentlemen. They are a very, they're actually a very, very decent people, the Irish. And I really, really love the Irish people. But they are the kind of people, they don't back down from a fight. And if Sinn Féin has been corrupted, some other organisation will rise up. And there will be an uprising against um, Ireland being taken over by another people. I'll tell you that much. It's going to be a fight, ladies and gentlemen. And obviously, you know, we're seeing the beginnings of it here with this uh, populist um, mass uprising, which could almost be called a pogrom. So it's fascinating what's going on. Obviously, we're going to watch it from a distance over here in Australia. But we're with our Irish brothers and in their fight for uh, uh, hegemony and keeping uh, Irish, uh, keeping Ireland Irish and making Ireland great again. And, of course... Irish lives matter.